first of all, um, thank you so much, Joanna, for the lovely introduction. Um, it's always a pleasure to speak to other researchers. As Joanna said, I'm going to be talking about how to tackle your first academic conference. I'm going to be sharing my experience uh, that I went to my first academic conference this year, and I thought it would be really great for you guys to see what I did and how I experienced it um, this September. And also, I'm going to be sharing some things that I, that I learned along the way to start. I'm Z. I'm Jordanian. I'm a third year PhD student in media and cultural policy. My research focuses on disability representation in Jordanian media versus Facebook. I'm a VIP. I'm a visually impaired person. And I use a white cane. You might have seen me around campus. And a fun fact about myself, I love to collect postcards and stamps from around the world. Just, as I said, I'm going to be talking about how you can tackle your first academic conference. And I'm going to use myself and my experience as a case study. So there are different things that I took and different stages I took in order to prepare myself. I did some research. I'm going to share what I did before, during, and after the conference. So let's begin. To start off, call for papers email. It's one email that all conferences will send out, and it is basically your key to being accepted into the conference because it's going to tell you everything you need to know when you are submitting um, a presentation, which is known as a paper, an abstract, or even just, you know, your question, depending on the conference organization. Um, I would really advise that you share this email with your supervisors because they will tell you whether it is good to apply for this certain conference, how it's going to benefit you, and whether your research fits the bill. So the conference that I went to, the theme was called Silent Voices. I'm doing my research on disability representation and disability being that it's the largest minority in the world, is known as having silent voices. So my research fit the organization's um, theme, so I just applied. And as Joanna said, I'm a journalist. I'm always in the field of media and communications and journalism. So I thought of the five W's. This is always what I think about these questions when I'm doing anything. So it's something to think about before you know you apply for your conference who's organizing the conference, uh, where and when this conference is going to be happening, what to expect from the conference. I didn't know what I was getting into. I had no expectations. And so I decided to speak to past researchers who actually went to the conference that I'm going to or went to. And they actually gave me some positive feedback that actually encouraged me to go to this conference. The conference I went to was a conference that was held by MEXA. It was held in Aberdeen uh, at the Robert Gordon University. MEXA is known as an organization that focuses on humanity, humanities and arts fields, anything that fits that bill, I would recommend that, you know, if you are in the humanities and arts sector, do give them um, a follow on all their social medias, but also check them out because they're actually such an amazing organization when it comes to conferences and networking. I also had to think about, you know, how will this impact my research, my career path? I want to teach in the future. So I wanted to connect with other researchers, but other professionals who are in my field who I know I could learn from. And why am I applying? As I said, I wanted to network with other people in the same field as me. So this was a great opportunity and something I would definitely recommend. Also, they offer funding uh, opportunities. So I had to think about like whether I'm going to be funding my own self. Like was it so, like was I going to be paying for my own pocket, or were I or was I going to apply to a brasserie? So some conference organizations will have an option where they waiver conference fees. So I'd recommend you apply for these. I also applied for the funding opportunities at the College of Art uh, during the year or during the span of the time that I was preparing for the conference. Unfortunately, I did not make the cut for both, so I ended up paying from my own pocket, which is fine. You know, if you think that you have the means, you know, to apply for, uh, to use your own funds, then go for it. I would recommend, like I said, to go to your conference. So what I did before I went to a conference, I, I had to work on my abstract. So the abstract usually is between 250 to 300 words depending on the conference. And to me, this was the hardest part when I was applying for a conference. As you can tell, I love to talk, which means I love to write. And it was so hard putting all my research question, like my big research question, into a tiny abstract. So what I did is I wrote, rewrote, sent to my supervisor, they revised it, and then gave it back to me and I rewrote. And honestly, I wrote four drafts of my abstract before I submitted it to the conference um, conference uh, organizers. And in the end, I got accepted in March to speak. Your paper, which you will be presenting, so it's your presentation, is mostly between 15 to 20 minutes. At the beginning, mine was 20 minutes. And then 
two weeks or three weeks before the, the conference, they send us an email saying, oh, we decided that your presentation is only going to be 15 minutes. And so I started to think, what am I going to be see saying? Like, how am I supposed to share my research when I'm only focusing on something small? So I decided to focus on a sub question. And like I said, how much are you going to be using from your budget? I would recommend that when you're budgeting for a conference, think about what are you expecting to do at the conference? You paid for the tickets, you're going there, you need to think about accommodation, travel, and are you going to be sightseeing? I've never been to Aberdeen, it's a new place for me, and so I wanted to sightsee. So I put all of that into my budgeting strategy. And then came the fun part. I decided, I started to plan my trip, what train I was gonna take, where I was gonna say, stay, and then I thought about who I was going to take with me. And I decided to take my mom. She's my inspiration. She's my role model. Uh, she's someone that I highly respect. And I wanted to bring her along to see what I was researching because she never knew what I was working on. She knew vaguely about the things that I was researching, but not in detail. Um, and, you know, having someone that you love and that you feel you're comfortable around is going to ease the nerves. Uh, this is a picture I took while I was on the train. As you can see, it was very foggy, which meant that we were going to be um, delayed. In fact, the train was delayed one hour. It was a two hour trip. It was delayed one hour because there was no signal on the tracks. During the conference. So when I was in Aberdeen, I figured out and I saw that your badge is your identification at the conference. It is going to be very helpful when others look at you or they're trying to find you with that ID. So basically it has your name. It has the name of the university you are basically representing, but also I kept the program with me. They give you a program in like a tote bag, dep depending on the conference. And that has your schedule, the people attending, where you need to be. And it's very helpful. So basically think of it as your Bible at the conference. It'll basically tell you everything you need to know when you're there. And it was so easy to get around because the people at Robert Gordon University knew that I needed assistance. They basically helped me map out the whole area and the whole venue. So that was great. Um, and as you can see in the second picture, this is when I was presenting. I presented on the 8th of September, and five hours after I presented, news spread around the nation and the world that the Queen had passed away. This is a day that I'm never going to forget. It's embedded in my heart and in my mind. But a lot of feelings were rushing through my, my mind and soul. Basically, I was first nervous. I was a bit stressed that things were going to happen, like technical problems. And yet, they did happen. And that was fine. I was also feeling sad. I was feeling anxious and I was feeling adrenaline rushing through my brain, my body. This is all normal to feel. And you need to actually think about how you're going to feel when you're standing in front of room, room of people. When you're presenting, I'd say breathe and enjoy the process because you are the master of your research. You're the only person who's going to know how you're going to present, what you're presenting on. So enjoy that process. Enjoy when you're presenting because during that presentation, once I presented, I found out that everybody was interested in what I had to say. They were asking questions, which is so key. If you are being asked, take into consideration that there are some questions you're not going to be able to answer. I would recommend don't say, I don't know. Just be like, this is an interesting question. I didn't think of this in my research, but I'm hoping to implement it in the future. We finished on a Friday, which was the 9th of September, and we had a couple of hours to spare afterwards. So we decided, my mom and I, to sightsee, like I said. So we walked around and stuff. And in the end, we basically just walked. We didn't know where we we're going, and we ended up crashing a play. We didn't, you know, had any idea that we were going to be going to a play, but we ended up watching Dream Girls. And I would recommend you go watch it because it's amazing. They got a standing ovation. It's still touring, I think, around Scotland, so give it a a chance to go see it. But um, it was really nice to end the day at the the conference at a high note. And we ended actually on a very blue skies kind of day. We got to see a beautiful sunset. I'm colorblind, so. I was able to see some colors, not all. When you guys can see, well, some people can see shades of like purple and red on the screen. I was able to see some hazes of blue. After the presentation, after like the conference and the presentation, I ended up writing a finding chapter. My findings chapter was basically what came out of my conference. And this is what mostly will happen. You will basically um, write everything that was in a presentation into a a finding chapter, and this is what your supervisors are going to recommend you to do. This is what my supervisor recommended I do after I went to the conference. So I ended up writing a 7,600 word chapter, and I basically submitted it before I went on suspension of studies. I guess as soon as I said suspension, some of you were like, oh my God, what is that? Um, it's worrying. The word suspension sometimes means, oh, we basically got expelled from high school. This is how I, I know suspension. But 
basically that's not it. So when you suspend your studies, it just means that you're pausing the clock. It is something that most PhD students do. And I found out that it's a normal thing to do, but I was recommended to do this uh, by my supervisors because I got matched with a guide dog. So you guys are no longer going to see me with a white cane. You will get to see me with a fluffy golden retriever on campus. So if you do, do come and say hi. Just please don't distract my dog while he's working. But just to give you a heads up, this is why I um, suspended my studies. And it's normal, honestly. If you get the chance and you have to do this, don't be scared. It is a very healthy thing to do in your PhD. And I found out that after the conference, I got to, you know, grow my network. I started adding people on my socials who were part of the conference who spoke. And actually, connections will lead you to future opportunities. I remember that a person on my panel asked me if I could come and speak to her class, her undergraduate class about my research. And that is something that I really enjoy, sharing my experiences with others. And so that was something that was really, really lovely that came out of the conference. So I want to leave you with some lessons that I learned along the way while I was at the conference. To start off, you are going to get intimidated. It's a feeling that I got when I first entered the first hall when they gave the keynote speaker. You're going to be sitting next to professionals, researchers, postdocs, and all of them are on different paths. They will have different information on the screen. And that is when you might feel intimidated. You're going to see a lot of information and you're going to start to think, oh my God, what am I doing here? Am I doing the right thing? Should I be speaking? Do I have all the information I want to say? Is this less than what I want to say? Do not fear. It is normal to feel intimidated in your first academic conference. But I just want you to remember, everyone is on their own path. Follow that path. It will lead you to the success that you are going to be led to. My second lesson to teach, to like share with you, is basically make sure you map your way around. The conference is a couple of days in the week. You're going to be moving from one span of the building to the other. And most importantly, if you already have mapped this a day before, then you know where you're going. Trust me, you don't want to be running from one place to another in heels. You will get blisters. Lesson number three, eat, hydrate, exercise, and sleep. First day in my conference, I didn't eat. I didn't drink. I just had coffee. I was so nervous. I ended up having a huge migraine. I was feeling tired. My eyes were seeing double. It wasn't a fun experience that I had to tap out. I felt like I was having a panic attack because I was around so many important people in my field, but also so many people were speaking a lot. And it can be an overwhelming experience, even though it's a fun experience. So I ended up having to just take a break, go and walk at least to clear my mind. And that helped. I ended up walking by the beach, which is something that Aberdeen is known for. But because I didn't listen to my health and my mental health when it was giving me warning signals, I wouldn't have noticed that I was not feeling well. So please listen to what your body is telling you, because if you're tired, then you're not going to enjoy the experience. My fourth lesson to share is less is more. You don't need to have a lot of information up on the screen. Let your reader imagine and to think about what you're to talking about, because if you put everything on the screen, they're going to read. And also it takes away from the magic. My final lesson is to enjoy the experience. You're there to meet new people, there to network, there to share and your research and share your ideas with like-minded people. I had such a blast that I actually, during suspension, when I wasn't supposed to be working on my work, I just researched conferences in order to share with my supervisors when I see them next. When it comes to the attendees, I say follow the people that you want to connect with, that you feel have the same research interests, because you never know where connections will lead you. I'd like to leave you guys with a quote that I really love. It's from Cinderella Story. Um, never let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the, the game. Don't let fear stop you from going to a conference. Just go in and have fun and enjoy because you never know where that is going to lead you. Thank you. And this is just my contact details if you want to follow, follow me or if you have any questions or if you just, you know, want to chat, always happy to chat.